Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is November 27th, 2019, and this is our episode number 516. Today we continue our look through the Brazilian electricity sector, and we will look at the last company remaining in our second pass through these companies. So we did a second pass involving about 10 companies and uh, out of those first nine one two three four five six seven eight nine we move two uh, companies to what we call final contention where we'll look uh, in more depth we, and those companies are setup and energy do brazil right here and the final one is neo energia the note i left to myself is keep looking seems to be growing fair enough so why do I think this company is growing? Well, net equity for sure, almost doubled here, uh, ignoring inflation. Revenue seems to have grown quite a bit here from 15 to about 26 billion in just two years. And it's a well-known well fact that now Energia has been acquiring quite a few companies over the years. So today, at the very least, we can look at what's going on in 2019 here and uh, I already downloaded the ITR here it is so now in Asia no uh, September 30th 2019 and this is now in Asia's net equity as of this moment 18 billion 928 so 18 billion 928 as you can see here seems to have grown on par or better than inflation real inflation not official inflation liabilities as always we'll add current so short term with non-current so long term so in the short term they are stating it as 8 billion 327 long term here 25 billion 807 34134 liabilities grew at a faster clip than net equity that is for sure okay so loans or debt and in this kind of itr here this kind of document uh it says impressions e financiamento so 3338 short term Plus the same thing here for long term. In this case, 19, 600, 19 and 600, just rounding to the nearest. So I think both debt and liabilities grew faster proportionally than net equity. So the ratios here will have worsened, as they have not by much, but they they are going in the direction that we do not want. current ratio <coughs> so current ratio will be current assets so it says ativo circulante here's 1.01 .01. and current assets here were 12 billion 559 and we divide this by current liabilities in this case 8327 1.5 51 so this is the edge of the bare minimum uh, we would like to see, which is 1.5. So everything I say here are simplified rules of thumb uh, that give us guideposts, you know. If we follow them, all the guideposts without, no flexibi without any flexibility whatsoever, it may be the case that we may never find one single company to invest uh, so it's a matter of having many of these at pretty good points and coping with um, a small slice that does not look that great otherwise it's really hard to find a company so we may lose opportunities all right so revenue <coughs> 
so the accumulated revenue for this um, this year so far is 21 billion and 8 million so 21 and 8 and what we'll do here is make a simplified extrapolation of these three quarters into four so divide by three quarters multiply by four quarters 28 billion and 11 million so it seems like revenue will grow this year let's take a look at earnings so far they are stating 1 billion 667 here same extrapolation it's simplistic but so 2 billion 223 also earnings here look at the earnings trajectory here and let's take a look at free cash flow because it was looking mighty different from earnings in past years so the operating cash flow 2 billion 434 and we add operating to investment cash flow that's free cash flow the way you do it and here minus 3445 so minus 3445 and divide by 3 and multiply by 4 so yet another year with expressive uh, negative free cash flow so just with with these numbers and the information that we have from here uh, it would be quite a stretch to draw a definitive picture of what's going on in now in Asia the first uh, suspicion in a way that comes to mind is that uh, now in Asia is in an acquiring spree uh, so spending a lot of money to conquer markets therefore burning free cash flow and succeeding in generating more revenue for sure uh, they seem to be posting growing earnings here so maybe in the expectation of these converting into actual uh, cash in the bank in the future because that's how you that's the nature of, of accounting for earnings so you can account as earnings things that you will really uh, see hit the bank years ahead and free cash flow is like this year like the actual cash flow that's why it's really important that we pay attention to both anyway uh, we could say that uh, Nanagia is a growth company or just a company that's in uh, inflating itself it's hard almost impossible to say just from these numbers here so the definition of a growth company uh, according to Warren Buffett and I'm just going to quote this from memory something like it's a company where uh, any added uh, capital so if you add uh, invest, invested capital in the company, it will generate high levels of return. Uh, so you can put invest into the company and it, it will continue to generate a return. Um, in this case here, it's not clear that it's a growth company because it's not the definition of return is not so so clear because uh free cash flow so negative it, it's almost like a startup in a way here so it's not clear if it will really return cash anyway so what we can do here is look at 10 years see if we can see the, that far from right now energy and at the very least know a little bit more about the company so this concludes uh current episode I will um, give you a little bit of an update on the initiative that I mentioned I think two episodes ago which is um, my active intention of uh, making a formal investment fund sometime in the future and what I'm doing is I'm studying for to get cert a certification called CGA it's a Brazilian certification uh, so my 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 theory here is that I get this certification, then I would I will be eligible to become um, 
uh, an asset manager uh, per our version of the SCC here, which is the CVM, Comissão de Valores Mobiliários. And then I will be able to pro you know, officially manage uh, a fund or an investment plan. So as I said, I w what I was doing is using this website here. <coughs> And I really started from scratch. So I bought the CGA course. Uh, I'm not endorsing officially this, this company. I don't know them. But I did buy their product here. And uh, the CGA course includes uh, a few courses. And I thought I'd do the, the one on uh, financial mathematics. It revolves around the HP calculator, so I'm doing that. And... Um, I did this first, uh, these first 11 things, and I did two exercises here. So this is before we I even start the, the actual course. So uh, I'll just keep uh, mentioning these occasionally here uh, because, well, you do know that these videos are first and foremost for my own education, right? If you're here, I'm really happy, but I don't even feel qualified to be educating any, anybody else. More like sharing my personal experience and hoping to make friends and people say, hey man, you know, you're not doing this right. Please do it, you know, consider this, consider that. And like this, we can all grow. So this is what I'm doing so far. Um, apparently I have done 26% of this introductory course. Let's see, you know, if I can do that next year, so take the test next year sometime, I think that would be good. I have very uh, young twins. They're one year old, yeah, plus uh, an older daughter. So, uh, you know, I'm dividing my time. Let's put it this way. So thank you very much. Uh, if you're still here and you're not a subscriber, well, please consider becoming one by clicking or tapping on the subscribe button. If you have questions, suggestions, uh, feedback, um, and especially if you spot mistakes in the analysis, please leave a comment in the video and I'll write you back as soon as I can. Meanwhile, I wish you have a wonderful day and see you next time.